Hey guys, Brandon, Sky Soldier Dog Training, and today we're gonna talk about prong collars. What's the brand that I use, how to size a prong collar, how to fit a prong collar, how to take off a prong collar, and the things that you need to be um, aware of when applying a prong collar to the dog that you're training with. Okay guys, let's get after it. Okay guys, at Sky Soldier Dog Training, we only use one brand of prong collar when we're using prong collars with dogs. And that would be the Herm Springer prong collar. This is the uh, 225 millimeter Herm Springer prong collar. It's the chrome plated uh, Martingale chain here. There's no quick release on it. This is the prong collar that I'm gonna use on most dogs, typically 100 pounds and below. There are other options for dogs above 100 pounds, and that's when you start to get into like the potentially 3.0 and the monstrous 4.0. And realistically, you guys are gonna use the 225. Most people are gonna use the 225. However, I have seen and I have had some exceptions with that with dogs with thick coated fur um, to where the prong collar could just not make any kind of headway on that fur. And so then we had to go from the 225 to potentially the 3.0 because the dog just couldn't feel the correction through all their thick fur. Another thing to consider is potentially, is your dog allergic to nickel? Because there's a lot of dogs out there that are actually allergic to nickel and these prong collars contain nickel so make sure that your dog doesn't have a metal allergy and if they do get yourself a Kurragon prong collar a Kurragon prong collar is typically going to be copper in color and it's going to be free of nickel so if your dog has a nickel allergy this is going to be the one that I recommend for your dog A couple of the accessories that I may suggest adding to the prong collar might be a quick lock, which is this here. And this quick lock is essentially going to make it a little bit easier for the owner to get the prong collar apart. So all you do is you slide this tab up and then you push this button and it releases your prong collar and releases your dog. Um, and you can hear it click and snap whenever you lock it. And then you push the retainer there and this is the quick lock. Um, this is the Herm Springer model. I think you guys can see that there. This is the Herm Springer model. I love them. I've got a bunch of them. I generally will give those to people that have a hard time pinching the prong collar open or closed. So that's just something to think about. Then the other thing that I suggest is potentially a double-ended leash or a um, a safety clip but this is the uh, good dog Sean O'Shea special leash this leash comes custom with a double-ended right here on the back end this is our safety clip this would be where I would clip to my prong collar this would be where I'd clip to my flat collar so that way if the prong, prong collar comes apart the, the dog is still attached to my leash so I don't lose my dog if my prong collar comes apart and again guys this is the good dog Sean O'Shea special you can get that on his website uh, he's got way more colors than purple this just happens to be the color that I have Okay guys, I wanna do a prong collar demonstration here before I put this on the dog so you guys can see how we put this on and how we take this off. So if you see the prong collar here, you have many different prongs and then you've got two that are very similar here at the end. You see these end two here? This is just my experience with prong collars. If you bend your collar from these last two links here, you see how these are folded in they're folded in like that. If you bend these last two, they tend to not have the, the recoil that some of the other prongs have. If you notice when I go to squeeze and take this off, you can see I can squeeze and that bends back together. Well, if you squeeze these last two, these last two typically will not recoil. So if you bend these, they might stay bent forever and then all of a sudden you're walking down the street and Fido scratches the collar and boom, the collar comes off. So generally when I'm working with people, what I'll tell them to do is stay away from these last two prongs when you're taking the collar apart. So come up as high as you can. You're gonna grab one link here. See, I'm grabbing here with this finger and I'm grabbing here with this finger. And I go down with one and I go up with the other, just like that. 
Now, if I'm gonna put it back together, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna squeeze the forks, run the forks right through the loops there, and then boom, my prong collar is secure. Some other things to consider here when we're looking at this prong collar, this one with the tag on, this is an easy way for you to remember where to clip your leash because this swivel head is where you wanna clip your leash. Then you have this ring right here. This is called your guide ring. And your guide ring is here to tell you the size of a prong collar because no matter what other people may tell you, the size of the collar is actually gonna make a difference because if this collar is too small, despite what we may think, if the collar is too small, you just can't apply any pressure from the prong collar. But if the prong collar is too big, generally that's gonna be also very ineffective for the dog and the dog's gonna get inappropriate, inappropriate pressure. So if you think about my three fingers here as the dog's neck, and you see all these extra hanging prongs here. Well, if you look at the guide ring, the guide ring is now touching those two blocks. So generally, I would tell you that this is gonna be too big of a collar for the dog. So right now, the prongs are sitting right at the front of my fingers. So all the pressure is being dissipated to the front spot of the dog's neck. So this is why when the collar is too big, this can actually be harmful or hurting the dog is because the collar is too big. Rather, if we take a link out here and then we put this on my arm, so take a link out and then I'm gonna put this on my arm. Now, when I put this on my arm, you notice how it's evenly around. There's no prongs missing. There's nothing hanging off. But then when I go to correct, see how the guide ring is not touching those two blocks? That's what I want to see when I'm using the prong collar. Now, this may even be just a tad too big here, but ultimately that's a pretty good fit there. You want to see the guide ring in between those two blocks there. All right, guys, so we've got Liberty here, my working dog. She's ready to be the, the demo for you guys as far as putting on the prong collar. So right now, Liberty's got a Doctra e-collar on and she's got a fur saver on. So ultimately, when I put the prong collar on, what I wanna do is I wanna shoot for as high up on the dog as I can. So when we have an e-collar on, we want the e-collar to be typically in between the flat collar and the prong collar. So we got that on there, just like that. There you go, girl. And so when we take our leash, so we take our leash and we're gonna hook our leash right to that swivel head. Good girl, I know. And then we're gonna hook this backup clip to her fur saver. Her fur saver is her collar. That's what she wears all the time. And so then when we get ready to go, I've got Liberty on the prong collar primarily with that clip. And then I've got her on that safety clip just in case the prong collar comes off. So if you notice here, Liberty, good girl. I have the prong collar as high up as can be, and then I have the e-collar, and then I have the fur saver right down here. So if I take off the e-collar here, you can see it a little bit better. We've got prong collar, fur saver, back up here. Yes, thank you for shaking. And then we've got the clip right there at the swivel head. As high up as we can get it. If it falls down, it's no big deal, guys. Don't, don't worry, it's not the end of the world. Ultimately, this thing should be able to be moved just like that. Um, but when we look at this, we wanna make sure this is as high up as it can be, but sometimes it's gonna fall, they're gonna shake, they're gonna do goofy things and the prong collar is gonna go from way up here to maybe slide down a little bit. Ultimately, what we don't wanna see though, is we don't wanna see... Way to go, girl. We don't wanna see is the prong collar down here where her fur saver is. We don't wanna see that right down at the bottom towards where the windpipe or trachea is, which is actually right down here. Right, girl. Okay, guys, so let's talk about a couple of the safety things when it comes to applying the prong collar. So when applying a prong collar, 
you want to make sure that your dog's not wearing it all the time. Generally, when I'm working with my clients and I give them homework to do and their dog has to wear the prong collar now because they just didn't care for the flat collar, I'm going to tell them that the dog should be wearing it at least 65% of the day. Um, while they're home. The dog will not wear the prong collar when in the kennel because if the dog turns and catches the prong on the collar or on the kennel wall, it, they can freak out, they can turn, jerk, hang themselves. Ultimately, these collars don't come apart unless we take them apart. And so then there's another thing about wearage for too long. Ultimately, if a dog wears a collar for too long, you can see how it kind of messes with their fur. Well, when you have a metal collar like this, it can absolutely start embedding into the fur. Now, this is going to take a long time. And, and generally speaking, when you see those pictures of the prong marks in the dog's neck, that's not from application of the prong collar. That's from over wearage of the prong collar, because generally those pictures are taken by vets or rescues that scoop dogs up and these dogs aren't scooped up from training environments these dogs are scooped up from places where humans have left them they've been neglected they've been tethered to a tree they've been tethered to a pole and ultimately these dogs have just been forgotten with these collars on so you know if you don't like prong collars if you if you you know think that prong collars aren't great whatever that's fine that's up to you Ultimately, I want you guys to have every tool at your resource so that way you guys aren't questioning how to do this, how to do that. You guys got all the answers you can look for right here. Yeah, good. Okay guys, so this plot. Um, so this concludes our video on prong collar. If you guys have any questions, you have any concerns, maybe you have some, some ideas of, of how to apply the prong collar in your guys' dog training, leave a comment below and I'll try to, try to see what we can do to change some things that may be going wrong or help you to make things go right. All right guys, see you in the next one. Hey guys, it's been a while since I've uh, I've done this. Uh, this is the part of the video that is for my kids. So um, if the Bible is not your thing and God is not your thing, just click off the video and I'll see you in the next one. Uh, but for you, those of you that have stayed, the verse that I'm going to read today is Matthew 7 and 8. So it says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receives. He who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be open. Guys, um, I hope that this prong collar video was helpful for you. Um, if you guys have any uh, other videos that you'd like me to do, any you know tips or tricks or things like that that you'd like me to cover, by all means, leave it in the comments below. But otherwise, you guys have a great day. See you in the next one.